the one committing these crimes, home invasion, murder, rape, theft by taking. So help me, I don't see what I did was wrong. Standing firm for a controversial court order, in Atlanta, Judge Marvin Arrington was in the middle of arraignments. Nearly all of the defendants before him were African American. Suddenly he asked everyone who was white to leave his courtroom because he had a message he only wanted the black defendants to hear. He told them they needed to stop the crime, stop the drugs, and change their lives. Now, some have called it reverse racism. Others believe it was a powerful, positive wake-up call. We don't believe in taking sides on 360 and cable news. I know a lot of folks like to scream and yell and shove their opinions down your throat. We try not to do that. We believe in facts and letting you, the viewer, decide for yourself. So let's hear from the judge. Marvin Arrington is the author of the book, Making My Mark. He joins us now from Atlanta. Judge, thanks for being with us. Why did you thanks ask, very much for having me. Why did you ask the white people in the court to leave? Oh, I didn't want to appear to be condescending, uh, talking them down, uh, what have you. See, I had been there 20, 20 years ago. I came out of the streets of Atlanta, and I want to see a better young person. Uh, I see them every day, every Thursday come in, cases involving where fathers are having sex with their daughters, people assassinating people for $15 over crack cocaine. So what did you I say to these defendants? To, I just said, simply said, get your life together. Get in school. You can be a better you if you work hard. I essentially said the same thing to them that Bill Cosby said uh, a year ago or what have you. I, I think a lot of folks listening would say, you know, good for you. It, it, that stuff needs to be said. It's a message that needs to be heard. But I guess why, what some people question is why did, why did you need to have white people leave the room to say that? Well, they'll get a chance this Thursday because I'm going to open the court doors and let everybody in. I'm inviting you down and others to walk in the courtroom because I'm going to give the same identical speech. You've got to do better. So, so man the in my neighborhood was shot and killed while he was watering his dog. Someone to take a watch off his hand. Kid was killed in Greenbrier Mall, walking a young lady to a bus stop for no reason whatsoever. Home invasion. It is absolutely out of control. But I guess if, if a white judge had white defendants before him and asked all the African-American lawyers to leave the room, would that be appropriate? I don't know. I think that's a hypothetical question. But, no, if you are racist, how do you get Jimmy Carter to sign your autobiography? How do you get Tom Wolfe to sign your autobiography? How do you get Sam Nunn to sign your autobiography? Well, How I, do you get I, Hank Aaron to sign your autobiography? I think too many folks in the media throw around the term racism far too often, I, and it's not something I, I, I would do. I guess, bottom but line, in this though, city, I ran eight times unopposed, and I've been on the bench now in the last two terms without any opposition, and when I ran for mayor, I won 90 percent of all the white precinct. It, that in, is nonsense. In retrospect, do you, do you regret asking the white people to leave? You said next time you're going to do this next week, you're going to have everyone in the courtroom. Oh, I thought uh, in retrospect it was a mistake because my sheriff said to me, Judge, that message should be given to everybody. Don't violate the law. Make something out yourself. Go to school. Find a role model. Somebody that will help you advance your life. You know, and you don't get a chance to be a racist if you sit on the board of trustees at Emory University, sit on the parents committee at the University of Virginia. Let me ask you, you've been on the bench, I think, more than six years, you were saying to me, during the commercial break. What's it like seeing these young African-American men before you every day, just day in, day out? It's got to take a toll. Oh, it takes a toll because six months to a year, those, some, those same defendants come back before you after you have given them probation, made them get a, you know, a, 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 a certificate, uh, they, they're back, and I ask them all the time, what progress are we making with you? And sometimes they cannot answer. There's no excuse to take somebody out and execute them in and around a place called Christian City because there was a dispute uh, about $15 worth of cocaine, whether or not the price was mm. going to be $15 versus $20. And to tell them not to kill, not to assassinate, not to have sex with their daughters, uh, not to maim uh, children and kill young people, uh, not to shoot guns rem remnantly in your neighborhood. Yeah. Now, if well, that is wrong, I don't want to do right.